power. Power. My friend, I'm here today to talk to you about power. I am not ashamed of the Bernoulli's equation, for it is the power of the water to raise it up out of the ground to the tank in the sky so it can run by gravity to the people so it can quench their thirst so they can be satisfied with the water. It is the power that raises it up. My friend, I'm gonna take you back something I'm sure we've all experienced in this life. Down here on this terrestrial ball, walking in the clay and the dirt, we have a well. And that well is deep. Yes, that well is deep. We must raise the water up out of that well. We have water in that well. It's down there and we gotta go get it. My particular well, it has 30 feet of water. From the bottom of the well to the water surface. And there's another 25 feet from that water surface to the ground. And from there, we pump up the water. Yes, yes, we put power in the water. And we raise it up. So I'm gonna raise it up. Raise it up using my pump. I'm gonna raise it up to a tank, an elevated tank, a tank that is above the ground, a tank that will serve the people. And that particular tank bottom of the tank is 40 feet above the ground. 40 feet! And the depth of the water in the tank is 8 feet. So I'm asking you today do you have the power? Do you have the power? How much power does it take to raise that water up out of the ground to the tank? Well, to know that, we need to know how much water we need. Oh, you're not listening to me. You're not listening to me. We need to know how much water we need. How can we calculate the power if we don't know how much water we need? In this particular situation, we are going to pump 35 gallons per minute out of there into the tank. So this flow is 35 gallons per minute. We can also express that flow as 0 0.078 cubic feet per second. We could also express, no, no, I'm not going there. I'm not talking about meters. No meters in my classroom. We do feet, we do gallons. All right, so we must know the power. Power! My friends, what is power? What is power? He that hath an utterance, let him speak. What is power? You son. What is power? Um, could you repeat, uh, power, power, um, like how strong, how strong you are, like, uh, strength, power, like that. Oh, physics, physics, power, power is, isn't it, uh, work per time? 
Yeah, work per time, okay. That's good. Power, that's good, that's right. That's right, that's right, thank you. Power is work per time. Let me ask you again, son. Son, what is work? Because the work per time is the power. It takes some work to raise this body of flesh up off the ground and stand up like a man. It takes some power. And the more, the same amount of work, no matter how fast I stand up, it takes some work. But if I stand up faster, there's more power because there's less time. So what is work? When I say I'm raising this, this fallen Adam flesh from the ground and raising it up, what is the work that it Very good, very good. Work is force times distance. All right, we're tracking right now. We're just, hey, don't look at me like a tree full of owls. I'm preaching good here. Let me and my friend here keep going. All right, friend. Force times distance is work per time. What force must we overcome to raise this water up, to raise it up out of the ground to the tank? What's that? Gravity, that's right, gravity, gravity. What is the expression of gravity? How has it expressed itself in this water? It's the, we raising this water up, I'm picking water up, I'm, it's hard, ho, 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 it's hard to strain against the goads and pick that water up. Exactly. The force is the weight of the water. The distance I raise it up is right, the head, or the distance. I'll just call it H at this time. So let me fill out my equation. The weight of the water is the force times the distance H per time. And son, how do I calculate that weight of that water? Is that right? Specific, yeah, specific gravity, not, yeah, dens density, that's good. So really, density is the mass per volume. If we want the weight per volume, we want the specific weight or unit weight which we use a gamma for it. In the original Greek, gamma, if I look in my book, in the original Greek, gamma, well, it's gamma. It's the unit weight of our fluid. In this case, it's water. So the weight of the water is gamma times, right, what's the volume of water? Weight of the water is gamma times volume. We still have the H there over time. My friend, do you see a simplification there? We have gamma, we have the weight of the water, 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. Every cubic foot of water, 62.4 pounds. Volume, H, time on the bottom. Anybody? You're not listening to me. You're not listening to me. What's that? Oh, very observant. That quantity right there, volume per time, is what we call 
the flow rate. So we have our equation for power is gamma times Q times H. H is the how far we raise it up. What is H? What is H? How far we raise it up. Right, it's the height, height we have to raise the water up. There is another factor we must overcome. Yes, yes, we must overcome the height of the water. We must raise the water up to a certain height. But there is another force out there. There is another force holding us back from raising that water up. And that force is <coughs> friction. Yes, friction is against us. Gravity is against us, but friction is against us. So H in my equation is the total head that I have to add to the water that I have to raise equals elevation that we have to raise it plus the head loss due to friction. That's it. And maybe in some cases, pressure. If we're raising it up to a sealed storage tank, this is an open storage tank. It's open to the sky. But if we had pressure, we'd have to add that pressure to it. What about velocity head? Velocity head in most cases is insignificant. I don't care about velocity head. And if you look at it, if I write my energy equation from one side of the pump to the other side of the pump, if they're the same size pipe or even the close to the same size pipe, the velocity head does not change. So our pump is not adding velocity head. Also, if I write my equation from the still water in the well to the still water in the tank, I'm writing it from a velocity of zero to a velocity of zero, so the velocity head does not change. <clears throat> so it's velocity head can usually be neglected. So the power is gamma Q, the flow rate, gamma is a specific weight of the fluid, H is the total head that we have to raise it. All right, let me write my equation up here. And then we'll do our specific problem here. So we said power equals gamma Q times H. I'm using a big H on purpose here. I don't want to mess around with a small H. All right. In our specific example here, our power equals gamma. We already said before that's 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. Don't shout me down. Times the flow rate and the units I want, if I have cubic feet there, maybe I want to put this 0 0.078 cubic feet per second. That gives me pounds per second that I'm raising up. How far do I raise it? How far do I raise it? Do I raise it 30 feet plus 25 feet plus 40 feet plus 8 feet? If I write my energy equation starting at the bottom of this pipe, I have a pressure head there, so I'm not starting at zero. The best way to look at this is I'm raising it from this water level up to 
this water level. So my H is how far I'm raising the water up. I don't care about this 8 feet, this 45 feet, this 25 feet, this 30 feet. What I care about is the difference between this water level and that water level. Again, this is open to the air, so I'm not adding any pressure head. So that H, if I do this correctly, it looks like it's 25 feet from the water level up to the ground. 40 feet from the ground up to the bottom of the tank. Eight feet from the bottom of the tank to the water level in the tank. I have a total of um, 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 20, 65, 73 feet. But I also said that besides the gravity, there's another force against us. That's the force of friction. We all must face that in life. Think it not a strange thing when you suffer various persecutions and tribulations and oscillations of the United Nations. You will face this friction. It's not a strange thing. We all face it. But many are the afflictions of the righteous. But we overcome that on them all. In my description here, I tell you that the head loss due to friction in the pipe system is 12 feet. Now, in most cases, you have to calculate that number yourself. You don't have me. You're going to have to go off on your own. When you leave these doors, there ain't going to be nobody with you telling you the head loss is 12 feet. You have to calculate the head loss. You have to use the Darcy equation. You have to use the Hayes and Williams equation. You have to come up with something to tell you the head loss in that pipe system. So the head loss in this pipe system is 23 feet plus 12 feet. The head loss equals total head, we have to raise it, is 85 feet. All right, now let's plug that into our equation. The power equals 62.4 pounds per cubic foot times 0 0.078 cubic feet per second times 85 feet. And that power is, I'll wait for you, uh, yes? I believe the lovely Miss Shay Lee has that number for us. Yes, thank you, Miss Shay Lee. 413.7. And the units on that are, ding, ding foot pounds per second. Foot pounds per second. I'm going to go to the hardware store. I'm going to walk in and I'm going to say, I need a pump. I need a pump to raise the water up out of a well. I need a pump to raise the water up out of the well to a tank. And I need that pump to raise the water up out of the level to the tank because I want to quench the thirst of the people. And I want a pump that gives me 413.7 foot pounds per second. Ha! <laughs> a man gonna laugh at me. He's gonna laugh at me. Foot pounds per second? We don't sell pumps by foot pounds per second. We got horsepower here. We got horsepower. So I want to know in horsepower. So the conversion from foot pounds to second to horsepower is 550 and the units for that will be foot pounds per second per horsepower. So it gives me, all right, the lovely Miss Shaylee will tell me the number of that. 0 0.75. 0 0.75 horsepower. That, my friend, is the power it takes to raise that water up to the tank so we can quench the thirst of the people. But, but, we are not finished yet. That is the power. that's going into the water. The power that's going into the water, what do you mean by that? Oh, it's a fallen world, my friend. It's a fallen world. Nothing is 100% efficient. 
The water needs 0.75 horsepower. That's what the power it needs. But the pump is not 100% efficient. We have to send more power to the pump. We have to send more power than that to get out the power into the water. So if I buy a particular pump, let's say, for example, that the efficiency of my particular pump is 80%. That means the power to the water was 0.75 horsepower. The power to the pump equals 0 0.75 horsepower. but only 80% of the power to the pump gets to the water. So only 80% of this power gets to the water. To, so to find out how much power I need for my pump, I take 0 0.75 horsepower divided by 0 0.80. And the lovely Miss Shaley, yes, 0 0.94. So that is the power that it takes to raise my water up so that the people may drink. They may drink of the clean water provided them pump power. So let me sum this up. Let me sum this all up. And in closing, did you get that number? Did you get that? that we need is the gamma, the unit weight of the fluid, times the flow rate of the fluid, times the head, the total head that we have to pump. That includes the height of the water that we must raise. It may include a pressure difference, but it always includes some friction loss, head loss due to friction over the efficiency. That is my pump power equation. Thank you, friend, for tuning in today. I hope that you have a great week, a great day. If you have any more questions, please contact me. Thank you very much.